In this question, we're told that when we have a unit impulse applied at the input to a system, the output is 3t u of t. So we know that the input is an impulse, and that's the output. And the question is, what's the impulse response? Well, by definition, the impulse response is the output when the input is an impulse. So the impulse response is actually given in the question. We don't need to do any work to find that. So that's, that's part A. Part A is just 3t u of t. But part B it asks for the step response. So the step response is the output if the input happened to be a unit step. And we find that by carrying out a convolution integral between the input, the unit step, and the impulse response, which we just found. So y of t would be the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x of alpha times h <coughs> of t minus alpha, the alpha. Now what we can do is just replace x with the unit step and replace h of t minus alpha with the equivalent expression that we found in part a. So I can replace x with a unit step and I can uh, replace h of t minus alpha with 3 t minus alpha u of t minus alpha, the alpha. So alpha is just some variable that isn't t. So you can call it tau, alpha, beta, any, any other variable. So whenever we see a unit step in an integration, we shouldn't think about integrating the unit step. We should just use that to change the limits for the integration. So u of alpha looks like this. It's only um, non-zero after zero. So it's multiplied by some function inside an integration. It has the effect of changing this lower limit to zero. That's what it does. Because there's no point integrating from minus infinity all the way to zero if you're bit multiplying it by a zero. So it effectively cancels out the beginning of the integration. And similarly, u of t minus alpha, what does that look like? u of t minus alpha, if you take this bit and say t minus alpha equals zero, that gives you alpha equals t. So it's a... Um, reverse step, so if this is 0 and that's alpha, it's a reverse step at alpha equals t. So provided that t is greater than 0, this is the equivalent of integrating all the way until t, because for values of alpha greater than t, what you have is zero. So multiplying anything by zero is just going to give you zero. So the effect of having this unit step is to change the upper limit to t, provided that t is greater than zero. So that's our condition. So if t has to be greater than zero for this bit to actually exist. So now we can replace our unit steps with 1. So this just gets replaced with 1, and this gets replaced with 1. So our integration now looks like this. y of t equals... I can take this outside the integration, so we have 0 to t, 1 times t 
times t minus alpha times 1 the alpha. So the ones disappear. You have the integral from 0 to t, t minus alpha, the alpha. So that will give you 3 t alpha minus alpha squared over 2 from 0 to t. And that will give you 3 t squared minus t squared over 2, which will give you 3 over 2 t squared. Now remember our condition here that t had to be greater than 0? We acknowledge that condition by then multiplying by u of t because u of t is only non-zero when t is greater than zero. So this is uh, upholding that um, condition. So when our condition says t is greater than zero, the way to represent that simply mathematically is to multiply your answer by u of t. So what we've just found is the step response. So rather than calling it y of t, we could have called it s of t. This is the step response. So this is the output when the input happens to be a unit step function. What we could have done is just integrated the impulse response, and we would have got the same result. But I found it here using the convolution integral.